In this video we're going to go over Squid Proxy in PFSense and what it can do for you and how to set it up. Um, to start off, what it can do for you is actually save a lot of bandwidth if you have hundreds or maybe even thousands of users that are constantly um, accessing the same material from off-site. Um, PFSense can actually cache a lot of that content and deliver it locally. Um, how to set it up is pretty straightforward in the package manager. Um, I've already installed it. Um, you just go to System, Package Manager, and uh, click Available Packages, and it'll show up as an available package. And you basically just click the Install button, Confirm, and it'll show up here as an installed package when you're finished. Um, the install is straightforward. It's very easy to do. It's just like any other PFSense package. Um, but before you can actually use it, you have to configure the, uh, the proxy server. So um, it'll show up under the services tab and you just click on squid proxy server and um, as you see I've already got mine installed and configured so um, a lot of my options are already set and I'm going to go through those with you but uh, the first time you access this page this checkbox will be unchecked because it's not going to enable it until you configure it. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do before you configure any of these settings or um, any of these other tabs, um, you have to configure the local cache. For whatever reason, during the install in PFSense, um, it basically is designed in a way where before you can turn on the proxy server or change any settings on the general tab, um, they want you to go to the local cache tab and basically just go over these settings here change anything that you want to change and click save and that sort of writes the local cache config file uh, once you do that then you can go ahead and um, modify any of these other tabs that you want to modify and then go ahead and enable the proxy server so go to the local cache tab first um, and just you know take a look at uh, some of these settings if you do want to go ahead and make any changes go ahead and do it now um, I have set the hard disk cache size to about a gig um, just because this is for testing purposes it's not actually going to be used in in real life and um, UFS uh, I believe is the default I left that UFS and also just so you know the local cache uh, clearing is located here uh, which could come in handy if you um, in the real world ever want to just you know completely blow out everything that's cached and uh, have it start all over again that's that's where you would do that okay um, I left pretty much all of this default um, I did change the maximum object size to uh, 512 just for uh, you know Windows updates and that type of thing some of the chunks may be a little bit bigger than um, than 4 megs so um, I thought it'd be a good idea and I read some documentation um, on some other places on the internet when it comes to Windows updates and squid and, and caching there's a, a lot of different uh, opinions and setups that I found um, but I, I chose 5, 512 megs as the maximum object size just because I, I do want to do the Windows updates um, in, in this example maximum object size in RAM 512 um, and then I did go ahead and enable the cache dynamic content checkbox here and then um, the custom refresh patterns this is what I found recommended from um, squid and pfsense they actually um, recommend these refresh patterns here and I'll copy and paste these into the description and um, I'll just label them refresh patterns so that way if you're doing a pfsense install and you want to copy this exact setup um, then you can so you can just paste this right into the uh, refresh patterns and you'll be good to go um, so click save on that that'll take care of your local cache tab and you'll be ready to go to all the other tabs remote cache I didn't do anything there um, antivirus I did go ahead and enable that and left this default left that default I turned on Google safe browsing and I changed the clam AV database update to every hour I did uh, force an update now so it goes ahead and, and downloads those definitions now and uh, definitely don't forget to change the uh, 
regional clam AV database update mirror from um, none to whatever you need it to be whatever your region is you definitely want to choose your region and you see this little footnote here it is strongly recommended to choose a mirror and or configure your own mirrors manually below um, because the default clam AV database mirror performs extremely slow okay so um, if you leave this on none, you're going to be downloading it from the, the default database and they basically are saying that that is not a good idea because it's too slow. All right. Um, I don't think I put any advanced options in here. I did not. Okay, so make sure you click save on this and that will actually turn on the um, um, CICAP in integration um, with, with Clam AV. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, ACLs. I have nothing in ACLs here. Traffic management. All that is zero. Nothing there. Authentication and users. Nothing there. Um, and then real time and sync. Uh, real time is just sort of a display of, of what's going on. Okay. Um, so we get to the general tab, and this is where a lot of the options um, actually are that we're going to change. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is check the box to enable Squid Proxy, and make sure Keep Settings and Data is checked, and then choose the interfaces that you want the proxy to run on. Um, in this example, I only have one um, interface that I want this to run on, so it's going to be LAN. The default port's 3128. Leave that alone. ICP port, we're not doing that, so you can leave that. Um, allow users on the interface, I checked that. Um, it may have been checked by default, I can't remember. Um, I did enable this, uh, force DNS IPv4 lookup first, and it says use this uh, if you're having uh, problems accessing HTTPS sites. And I myself, in the very little testing that I've done, didn't really have any issues, but I read a lot of people that were having intermittent issues um, staying connected to HTTPS sites. So I thought, why not? We'll turn this on and see if it breaks anything. Um, and I haven't had any issues uh, in the very limited testing that I've done with HTTPS sites with this enabled. So you may want to, you know, try that or you know, leave it disabled. Your mileage may vary. Just sort of test it and see what works best for you. Um, I left disable IC ICMP unchecked left that blank um, and now we're getting down to the transparent proxy settings and you can set this up transparently or you can um, not and you can configure all of your clients to connect through the proxy um, uh, at the uh, at the workstation or the client level if that's what you want to do I chose to do transparent that way I don't have to really change any settings on all of the other clients that would be behind this proxy server so um, uh, check that if that's what you want to do. And uh, again, we're only running this on the LAN interface. I left everything else blank. Uh, so that takes care of HTTP traffic being transparently intercepted by the proxy server. Um, however, most traffic, as you probably know, is no longer HTTP. Um, anything now is HTTPS just about whether you're just going to you know google.com to do a search that redirects you to HTTPS um, you know reddit uh, everything it's not just um, uh, encrypted traffic anymore and, um, if it's if it's just usernames and passwords it's pretty much everything that uh, you're doing just with normal browsing is HTTPS so um, we definitely want to uh, also enable SSL filtering and that will take care of anything on port 443 and, and SSL and um, we'll be able to capture that traffic as well um, and, and cache that. So um, I did change the man in the middle mode to custom and I'll go over that in just a, um, a couple minutes when we get further down of, of why I did that. Uh, again we're only running the proxy on the LAN Proxy port, uh, I left blank, which defaults to 3129. Leave this uh, compatibility mode to modern. The uh, DH key size, I left 2048, which is the default. And um, the CA, you'll just need to go to the certificate manager and um, uh, generate a CA so that you can pick one here. 
uh, you can't leave it none or it won't work so you have to uh, just create one CA in the certificate manager in PFSense which I'll show you how to do that uh, so that you can select it here from this drop down all right so um, I left this blank I didn't touch any of these settings here um, I did not enable access logging yet uh, although you can turn this on and you can use things like uh, light squid to actually um, monitor the, the uh, access logs and give you a little um, report on sort of who's doing what and what the traffic looks like which we'll go over that probably in a different video um, so that was disabled leave all this blank I left all of this just default and obviously if this was in a production environment you would, you would want to come in here and uh, actually make sure that all of this is correct for your setup so uh, you remember I said the uh, man in the middle mode was custom and the reason that is uh, is because I needed to do some custom things for Windows updates to actually work through the proxy server um, so if you need to do custom SSL man in the middle options the only way that your options here will be read uh, as you see from here is if you choose custom alright so um, or actually I think it tells you down here the only um, it says ignored unless SSL man in the middle mode is set to custom okay so if we go up here and choose anything other than custom so let's say we do splice all or splice whitelist and bump the rest um, these options won't take effect alright so choose custom <clears throat> if you want to do custom options if you don't care about Windows updates and you don't care about being able to specify um, certain domains or uh, hosts or IP addresses if you don't care about splicing some and bumping the others you just want to do an all or nothing approach uh, then you could just choose to forego these custom options and just choose um, you know splice the whitelist and bump otherwise or splice all um, one reason that I had to do custom options is because it didn't in my testing it did not appear that if I added things to the whitelist that I wanted to be spliced that squid was actually splicing those connections it was still bumping those uh, for whatever reason I'm not sure but uh, basically what I've done in the custom options should be doable by selecting splice whitelist and bump otherwise you should be able to select this and then go to the um, ACLs and go down to the whitelist and put your host names there but for whatever reason, um, if I saved that and um, you know choose that option, it just didn't work. Um, the Windows Update domains were still being bumped, and the Windows Update servers these days uh, do not uh, play nice with that. Windows 10 is not happy um, about that at all for obvious security reasons. So you can't bump that SSL connection. You need to splice it, which is basically everything remains transparent it gets the real certificate from the Windows Update server and it thinks that everything is fine um, and for whatever reason that doesn't work so to get around that um, just choose custom here and again I will copy and paste my custom options here into the description so if you're following along and you want to do this exact setup then you can and of course um, if you do need to do any custom you know uh, custom domains that you want to do you could just add them here so um, let's say um, we want to we've got another domain that we're like oh we don't want to bump that we want to splice that connection then you could say you know anything that's on the you know google.com domain we want to make sure that that is spliced and not bumped you could just add those domains here you can just keep adding line after line whatever you want if you want to take some of these out you can take some of these out alright so I actually don't want to do that so um, and basically what this code means is this domain this domain this domain and this domain are all going to be spliced so that uh, everything is transparent and uh, the rest of the connections will be bumped okay so um, and I'll probably go over what the difference is between a splice and a bump in a different video. I don't really want to get too far off topic with this right now. So um, 
click save on here and um, that should enable the squid proxy it should um, have your your cache set up and um, your uh, let's see what else was there oh the the antivirus should be working and what you can do to check and make sure everything is running is go check on the services and you should see all of these with a the green checkbox okay so um, that lets you know that the service is actually running um, now let's quickly just jump over to the certificate manager and I'll show you how to uh, generate that CA that we selected on the general uh, the general tab so you just go to system cert manager and you see I've already got mine you know created here but uh, just make sure you're on the CA's tab click add give it whatever name you want um, you can just call it pfSense make sure that uh, create an internal certificate authority is the method that's selected 2048 for the key length SHA-256 for the digest algorithm and then the lifetime you can put whatever you want here 3650 is 10 years that sounds like a nice you know round number um, the common name put whatever you want here doesn't doesn't matter and uh, you can leave all of the rest of the information blank however if you're doing this you know for real I recommend you actually come in and, and fill this information out so when you click on save it's going to take you back to the list of CAs that you have installed on PFSense or that you've created on PFSense and as you see here's mine um, so when you go to the um, squid um, the general settings to select your CA whatever CAs you've created here will show up in that list and you just choose whichever one you want to use um, it is important that if you're going to use bumped connections to um, come here and click on this button that exports the CA which when you click on that it downloads the uh, certificate which is a .crt file and you see Windows 10 is sort of freaking out about this it's like wait you know this could be harmful are you sure you want to keep this or do you want to discard it so just click on keep um, you know it's your own you know certificate so everything should be okay there um, and then what you want to do is um, install this to the trusted root certification authority for the local machine um, and that basically uh, tells Windows to trust the, the CA from PFSense okay if you don't install this to your uh, if you don't install this certificate authority as a trusted root authority you're gonna have all kinds of SSL errors and you know the Chrome browser is going to complain and say hey there's a man in the middle attack going on here something's not right so make sure that you install this uh, on your Windows 10 machine now another thing to remember is if you have you know five or ten computers you can probably do this very easily just by you know installing this manually um, uh, installing the certificate manually I mean if you have you know 50 machines a hundred you know 5,000 machines you could very easily use you know Active Directory and group policy you know whatever method you want to deploy this so that your end users don't get the error message and your certificate authority is actually pushed out as trusted um, to avoid all of those issues because the last thing you want to do um, in deploying the proxy server is, is cause uh, problems like this little thing right here um, this is what your users would see they would see whoa your connection is not secure there's something going on and uh, as you can see we take a look at this this CA right here and it's or this certificate and it's just you know it's not trusted we could very easily download um, this CA and, and have it trusted to make this error message go away but uh, we don't want to cause any you know major alarm for end users all right so that's how you create the CA and like I said you'll go back to uh, you'll obviously need to do that before you um, come into the general page here and select it um, and uh, so yeah there's there's the CA squid uh, or none and like I said don't use none here if you're going to use SSL filtering I, I don't think I, I know it won't work correctly and I believe that I read some documentation that say that uh, says don't don't use none because it, it doesn't work um, at all I don't think the the proxy server will, will even run so that's pretty much it for the settings and um, one thing we can do 
to uh, test and make sure that we're actually using the, uh, the proxy server here is go to a website that has an HTTPS connection, check the certificate, and uh, we will see that it's actually issued uh, by Squid, which is our PFSense CA. So that's pretty cool and it's not complaining. And uh, another thing we can do is go here and do Windows Updates. And we will just make sure that Windows Updates are working and that uh, the connection is being spliced correctly and not being bumped because if, like I said, it's, if it's being bumped, then a Windows update is going to fail here. It's going to say, you know, some weird, weird error message about how it can't connect to the server. Um, and uh, anyway, Windows updates are working and we're using the, uh, we're going through the proxy server. So, uh, so yeah, that's, that's how you set up, um, that's how you set up Squid Proxy in PFSense, and um, like I said, you can go to pretty much any website now and uh, check the certificate, and they're going to be issued by the uh, the, the PFSense router. So um, I think that's pretty much it. Like I said, we'll go through another couple videos, maybe talking about um, how you can look at some of the access logs and how you can do some other cool things. But uh, if you have any other questions, um, you know, please ask in the comments, and thanks for watching.